All right, guys, so you just got your brand new ET Max out of the box, and you're thinking to yourself, the hell do I do now? Well, that's what this video is for. We're gonna be setting up the ET Max today. It just came in. Um, step one, right? Velcro, let's talk Velcro. So the very first versions of the ET Max came with not Velcro. It was basically like velvet. Um, my buddy Nick got an ET Max, one of the very first ones. It had Velcro strips inside that were, in my opinion, literally dangerous. Um, if your Velcro that comes with it feels like a piece of velvet, your pads are not going to stick and they, they literally fall off like with almost no pressure at all. So double check, make sure you have, I think he had um, two big sheets. I got five little sheets. So they even sent me an extra sheet of Velcro here. So if you have the little sheets of Velcro like this, you should be good. You can feel it, it feels like Velcro, right? The ones that on the first version did not. Make sure you got the Velcro. Let's put this on the wheel. All right, so obviously pretty self-explanatory Velcro on wheel. It looks to me like it goes in this orientation because there's the four screws here. Looks like we got four notches, two screws here. We got two notches. And I also just realized that I did not get an extra piece. One of these are two middle strips. Let's just go ahead and put the middle strip right on. All right, and also all four strips look the same to me, even though this side's not quite the same as this side. So, but it does look the same, like these just go like that. I gotta say, I kind of like this design here. You see everybody these days buying, hell, look look what I got on the table right there. Grizzle pad fairings for the EX30. Everybody's buying these flat sides for their wheels and sticking big patches of Velcro on them. So the ET Max comes stock with a big flat side and a bunch of Velcro on it. So uh, I kind of like that design a lot. So shout out to Bigode for that one. All right, looking good. Velcro's on. Now let's talk tire pressure, huh? Let's talk tire pressure so anytime you get a brand new wheel always want to check what the tire pressure is um, this feels super firm like there might already be air in it uh, but we're gonna pump it up anyway I think I'll just start with like 34 pounds it's like a pretty solid number to start with you can always ramp it up from there all right so it did have some air in it um, but it definitely wasn't 34 pounds so I just pumped it up pumped it up to like 38 pounds something like that to account for some loss of pressure. Uh, anytime I get a new wheel, I always tend to start with lower tire pressure, and then as I get acclimated to the wheel, ramp the pressure up. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier to ride the wheel with lower tire pressure at first. Um, but as you get more acclimated to the wheel, you're gonna get better range and better speed the more tire pressure you use. It'll be a little bit more squirrely. So you just gotta kinda balance it out, right? That's why I kinda, I, I like to start right around that 34 mark, see how that feels, and then, uh, we can always up it up once you're getting real comfortable on the wheel. All right, Velcro's on, tire pressure's on. Let's start putting pads on. The brake pads only really go on in one spot. They fit perfectly snug up against the back here. You could kind of move them a little bit if you wanted to, but I'm pretty much going to put these as snug as I can to the top and as far forward as possible. Get those on there nicely. All right, now for the front pads, what you're gonna wanna do, turn the wheel on, get her balancing. Um, you wanna put on your riding shoes and your knee guards, if that's what you wear, that's what I wear. Um, and what I like to do is just kinda get into a decent riding position. I wanna bring the pad down and get it kinda in contact with the top of my foot and just back it off by like a quarter inch. And then personally, I like my pads a little bit forward I like to be pretty free when I'm riding and just have the pads when I'm really trying to hill climb or do accelerations. So I wanna leave myself plenty of space here uh, between the brake and the front with this where my toe can hit it. Um, that's 
pretty close to right. Uh, luckily, since they're on Velcro, we'll be able to go ride and make adjustments as I see fit on the fly, which is nice. All right, so it's the next day here, and I actually forgot there's one more piece of hardware we'll make an adjustment on here, and it's the pedal height. I forgot that the pedal height adjustments. Um, right now, it looks like we are at the second highest setting. So I'm gonna drop it down a little bit here. And uh, I guess to the lowest, it looks like there's three settings we can do. And we're on the second highest, so I wanna go to the lowest, I guess. All right, so you can see from the stock to the lowest setting, pretty significant difference. It's about a, uh, I would say about a solid inch, maybe an inch and a half lower. So it's definitely a lot lower. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to change my plat pad placement now that I've lowered this pedal. I'm gonna obviously lower this pedal as well. Um, but yeah, I so rule of thumb, if you're trying for stability, especially on the streets, you kinda want your pedals as low as you can, lower center of gravity better. Um, if you're going off-roading and that kind of jazz, or if you just like the feeling of higher, I mean like technically, the pedal to seat is shorter with the higher pedals as well. So maybe if you're a sit rider, you might like them higher. If you're an off-road rider, you might like them higher. But personally, I want them as low as possible uh, to make it nice and uh, stable at speeds. All right, so next up, the pedals, right? I forgot. I almost forgot about this. This was a problem with Nick's wheel that I had to fix. The pedals on this wheel are ridiculously flat. Right, and I, I personally, I like them ever so, like they're super flat. I like them to just be a little bit of an angle, just kind of locks you in a little bit better. That's how the EX30 is, which um, is how I prefer the ride. Um, if you like them flat, leave them be, but we are going to change the pedal tilt adjustment because yeah, so let's do that. Might have to move the pads after we adjust the pedals, um, but I will show you real quick where the adjustments are on the pedals. All right, so down here on the underside of the pedal, Right up in here are the adjustments to move this plate right here. As this plate, these tighten up, pushes this plate out and changes the angle here. So if you want them more flat, loosen these. If you want them more convex like I do, tighten these and you can see all that gap in there. We're gonna try and close that gap basically. All right, yes, thousand times better with the angle on the pedals for me. Love it. Did have to move the pads just a little bit, but uh, way, way more comfortable for me with that. Just a slight, just a slight angle. Uh, all right, so now we have the hardware basically set up. The only thing we're missing right now is the shock. But we're gonna worry about the shock afterwards. Uh, that'll be the last thing we touch. Next, we need to mess with the software side of things. So first thing we're gonna do is update the firmware. We're gonna start off by updating the actual wheel firmware. And then when you do that, you're also gonna see that there is a BMS firmware. We're gonna do the BMS firmware second because when we did it with Nick, we did the BMS first and then the wheel firmware and he still wasn't able to charge at 20 amps. Um, I feel like it's because we did it the wrong direction, right? I think we gotta do the regular firmware then the BMS firmware. Um, I feel like the regular firmware might've overridden the BMS firmware. I think these have smart BMS by the way. I'm not positive, I don't know anything. Don't quote me. Um, but the BMS has its own special firmware. Um, so we're going to do the regular firmware, then the BMS firmware. I have no way of testing the 20 amp charging today. Uh, maybe I'll see if Nick's home. Maybe I can ride to his house and try his charger. I don't know. Um, but we're going to do that. So in order to do that, you want to try and do firmware upgrades using the Bagode app. If you have an Android phone, go online, find the Bagode APK, download the Bagode app, use the Bagode app if you can. Um, that's what the wheel was designed to be used with. Use that. EUC World technically works. Um, I tried to do it on Nix with EUC World. It wasn't available. There were no firmware updates. Um, so just use the Bagode app. If you're an Android, if you're an Apple user, you should have luck. Sorry, but Android people, we can use the Bagode app. So let's. Uh, I already have the Bagode app. I owned a bunch of Bagode wheels. Um, so I'm going to first upgrade the firmwares, and then we're going to. Uh, turn off the alarms because ain't nobody got an ET max to go 15 miles an hour. All right. Well, we just ran into our first problem. So I've heard of this happening before. Um, 
And it sounds like it just happened to me. Uh, it looks like trying to upgrade the BMS firmware just bricked the wheel. I can't even turn it on anymore. So the regular firmware updated no problem. Um, but now with the BMS upgrade, I just tried to do it and it just started beeping. Now when I turn the wheel on, Don't love that. So we are going to have to try the override, which I believe was, oh, let me turn this off, it is super annoying. Um, basically you hold the power button while trying to do the firmware update. So let's try it. All right, there we go, worked like a charm. Just held the power button while I sent the firmware update and it worked right, I don't know. All right, well, I guess I'll ride it now and see what happens. All right, cool. So all the hardware is complete. The firmware updates are complete. Now the next step, I already turned off the alarms. What you want to do is turn off alarm two. That's how it's phrased in the Bagoda app. Turn off alarm two. That'll only leave the alarm on when you go over 80% um, PWM. So PWM is like how much power is remaining, right? Anytime you break the you're used 80% of the available power, so you've only got 20% power or less left, it'll start beeping at you. Don't ride the beeps. Okay, now what we want to do is start fiddling with some settings. So I'm gonna bring this out front and we will do a calibration. And I'm going to also just check like the ride mode and that kind of stuff, uh, just see what those settings are looking like. Feels pretty good right now. I, I think it's in medium mode. That's what I prefer to ride usually, but we'll mess around with a couple of settings and see what happens. All right, so once again, I'm realizing that I am filming on my phone, so I can't show you the calibration, but uh, basically you just go into either Bagode app or EUC World, find the calibration setting, and uh, just try and make your wheel level. I like a very slight forward pitch, just slight. Software stuff's all set up now. The last thing is the shock. Um, honestly, out of the box, shock feels pretty good for me in my weight. All right, and that's pretty much it. I got the hardware set up, I got the software set up. Enough talking, let's do some riding, baby. But we will save the riding for another video. Honestly, this one's probably running a little bit long at this point, so we're gonna call it here. Uh, thank you guys for watching, really appreciate it, as always. Um, if the best, if you wanna support the channel, support me, uh, the best way to do so is to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, if you really wanna support me, Use the affiliate link down below in my description. If you plan on buying any unicycles or scooters or parts or whatever, uh, buy them from AlienRides.com with my link. They, I get a little small kickback. Anything that comes back to me gets spent on the channel. Uh, so that would be the best way to support me and the channel. Keep getting more videos, more content. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. Uh, I will catch you on the next ride. That's it.